As we light the Christ candle, we usher in the peace and sanctity of this worship service. The candle brings peace into our homes and adds light and warmth to our lives. It reminds us that our world is created with love. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Holy God, liberator of all people, we have gathered to worship and to celebrate the good news. And through the teachings of Jesus, which is the good news for us, we learn that you are a God of love and compassion and that you are the creator of all things good. You are the creator of not just humanity, but all of creation. And we come to you because you have called us into community with people and with nature. We are called to support each other as we take this journey of faith together. And we pray on this summer day that you will fill us with your loving compassion. May we continually learn how to walk in the teachings of Jesus. And we want to hear the voice of Jesus today the voice that calls us to open our ears and eyes to your way of creation. We want to hear your voice that teaches us to respect your beautiful gift of life. Open our hearts and minds to your presence with us now. And we pray through Jesus, who is our faithful teacher. Amen.
The scripture reading this morning is from Judges, chapter 9, verses 7 to 15. It's referred to as the parable of the trees. When it was told to Jotham, he went and stood on the top of Mount Gerizim, and cried aloud and said to them, Listen to me, you lords of Shechem, so that God may listen to you. The trees once went out to anoint a king over themselves. So they said to the olive tree, Reign over us. The olive tree answered them, Shall I stop producing my rich oil by which gods and mortals are honored, and go to sway over the trees? Then the tree said to the fig tree, You come and reign over us. But the fig tree answered them, Shall I stop producing my sweetness and my delicious fruit, and go to sway over the trees? Then the tree said to the vine, You come and reign over us. But the vine said to them, Shall I stop producing my wine that cheers gods and mortals, and go to sway over the trees? So all the trees said to the bramble, You come and reign over us. And the bramble said to the trees, if in good faith you are anointing me king over you, then come and take refuge in my shade. morning. The psalm reading this morning is Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's, and all that is in it, the world, and those who live in it. For he has founded it on the seas, and established it on the rivers. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord, and who shall stand in his holy place? 
those who have clean hands and pure hearts, and who do not lift up their souls to what is false, and do not swear deceitfully. They will receive blessing from the Lord, and vindication from God of their salvation. Such is the company of those who seek him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob. Lift up your head, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts always be aligned with your love, O God. Amen. This week I read a sermon by Barbara Brown Taylor called The Dominion of Love. And in this inspiring homily, Taylor explores what the author of Genesis meant in chapter 1, verse 26, the command for humans to have dominion over creation. She notes that for many years the predominant view was that we humans had the right to do with creation whatever we chose. In this view, everything was put here for human benefit and disposal. But over time, many people of faith have come to see that we have been entrusted with the care of the earth and all its inhabitants. More of humanity is now accepting that the earth does not belong to us and that we are only temporary guests on this planet and should treat it with the utmost respect. You and I have the privilege and the honor of being co-creators with God when it comes to creation. In her sermon, Barbara Brown Taylor raises a series of questions in terms of God's compassion for the earth. Do only two-legged ones qualify? Or do my neighbors include the four-legged ones, the winged ones, the ones with skins and fur? Does God's compassion stop with human suffering, or does it extend to every creature in need of mercy, especially those with no voice of their own to cry out for help? And she writes that it should be clear that we are to be caring neighbors not only to humans, but to all God has made. This week, as I drove down to Quebec to see my mother, once again, I could not help but notice the beauty of nature all around me. Fields of corn getting taller, apple tree orchards coming into bloom, beautiful horse farms, the majestic hills in the distance, and the different species of trees that are so magnificent at this time of year. As I was driving and looking at nature all around me, I could not help but feel the interconnectedness of all of creation as revealed to us through the scriptures. In today's scripture in the book of Judges kept running through my mind. The author tells us a story in which the trees are mysteriously talking to each other. And each tree speaks about their gift to humanity. The olive tree says it gives us rich oil. The fig tree gives us sweetness and fruit. The vine gives us wine, which is meant to cheer us up. And the bramble says, we are to take refuge in its shade. I am reading a book called Finding the Mother Tree. And the author is Suzanne Simard, and she is a pioneer on the frontier of plant communication and intelligence. And she believes that trees are not simply a source of timber, but are a complicated, interdependent circle of life. She says that forests are social, cooperative creatures connected through underground networks by which trees communicate their vitality and vulnerabilities with communal lives not that different from our own. And she describes how trees living side by side for hundreds of years have evolved how they have traits that are the essence of all civil societies. When I listen to these new revelations coming to us through modern day science, I cannot help but reflect on the authors of our scriptures who knew and shared this information with us thousands of years ago. And I am in awe of their wisdom. Our sacred scriptures tell us that the web of life is undeniable. 
And this commonality we have with nature should motivate us to be more considerate of the rest of creation. Our scriptures today call us to step out into nature and see God at work in the world and declare with the writer of the Psalms that the earth is the Lord's and all that is in it. You know, something profound happens when astronauts see planet Earth from space for the first time. It is called the orbital perspective or overview effect. And it is a cognitive shift in awareness by many astronauts during spaceflight. NASA astronaut Ron Garin explains this incredible feeling in his book, The Orbital Perspective. He says, as I look down at the Earth, this stunning, fragile oasis, this island that has been given to us and that has protected all life from the harshness of space, a sadness came over me, and I was hit in the gut with an undeniable sobering contradiction. In spite of the overwhelming beauty of this scene, serious inequity exists on the apparent paradise we have been given. He continues, I couldn't help thinking of the nearly one billion people who don't have clean water to drink, the countless number who go to bed hungry every night and the social injustice, conflict, and poverty that remain pervasive across the planet. Garin says, seeing Earth from this vantage point gave me a unique perspective, something I've come to call the orbital perspective. And part of this is the realization that we are all traveling together on the planet, and that if we all looked at the world from that perspective, we would see that nothing is impossible. In other words, the overview effect is the experience of seeing firsthand the reality of the Earth in space, which is immediately recognized as a tiny, fragile ball of light hanging in the void, shielded and nourished by a paper-thin atmosphere. From space, national boundaries vanish, the conflicts that divide people become less important, and the need to create a planetary society with the united will to protect everything on this tiny blue ball becomes both obvious and imperative. If we could all adopt this overview reality of seeing planet Earth as a gift from God to all of humanity, maybe then we would ensure that all people and all of creation are treated with dignity and respect. I hope and pray that we will be willing to embrace not only the new science of our connectedness to each other and to all of nature and creation, but also the wisdom of the scripture writers who keep calling us to live with respect in creation. Amen.
Let us pray. Holy God, as we leave our worship service today, may we be filled with hope for the world. During the coming week, may we watch for your presence that is all around us in creation. It is your love that calls us to return to your way of being in this world. And we thank you for all who live the teachings of Jesus and who give their lives in calling us to dream of a just and fair world for all people. May we give our lives to make those dreams a reality. How precious is your steadfast love that offers all people refuge in the shadow of your wings, under the shade of all trees. May we too offer refuge to those who are hurting in this world. And may we always follow our sacred teachings that call us to be a light to others we meet along life's journey. And may we always live out the teachings of Jesus in our daily lives. And now in a moment of silence, we offer to you, O oh God, what is in our own hearts today. And finally, we ask blessings upon all who worship in the name of love, blessings upon our families and our communities, and blessings upon our world. Amen.
May God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine upon us and be gracious unto us. And may God's countenance be upon us and give us peace this day and forevermore. Amen.